How's the wound? Stop bleeding at least, but we're out of bandages. Perfect. No bandages, no wine, and we're eating rats for the months. What was it again? Easy contract, easy money, right? Soon these will be distant memories. We'll be rich. And we'll... We're under attack! We gotta go! Hello and welcome back to another Let's Play. My name is Saiken and today we're taking a look at a new title called War Tales. Uh, the intro already gives us a great introduction in what the game is about. A freshly released AAA game that is going to look into the life of a mercenary gang. It has similarities to other tactical games and apparently a relatively deep tactical gameplay plus a lot of meaningful choices. For full disclosure, I have not watched anything but the trailer and a brief description of what the game is supposed to look like. It turned out uh, to be a great find on my Steam list, so I figured might as well start a playthrough and garner some interest in a new title. So this is going to be a blind playthrough. As always, we are going to explore the game together, so I invite you into the world of War Tales, uh, where we are hopefully going to be successful. Let's start with a new game, and we are going to play on the hardest difficulty. But before we can do with uh, any difficulty, we need to, to answer a couple of questions, apparently. So, our companions are Apprentice Friends and Looking for Adventure, which gives us influence, uh, plus, but raw materials, uh, minus. Starting Companion, Swordman, Archer, Ranger, Brute. Uh, it looks like a quite diverse troop. We got uh, men escorting merchants for, um, who lost uh, their employer. Uh, nose plus 150. Uh, Swordman, Spearman, Warrior, Brute. So it seems like a more melee focused uh, troop. Uh, deserters fleeing an ab abusive captain plus raw materials, but we are also hunted. Apparently, Swordman, Archer, Warrior, Ranger. That's interesting. Young Farmers looking for a better life. Brute, Spearman, uh, Spearman Archer, or Bandits uh, looking to escape the guards. Hmm. I wonder what a great start would be. I like the idea of uh, being deserters and fleeing an abusive captain. That will raise our suspicion, but we could kind of roleplay it as a way where uh, these guy, the captain was just a power hungry, uh, um, very corrupted individual and were uh, trying to do the right thing. Kind of a Robin Hood arc. Swordman, warrior, archer, ranger. So that looks like an interesting combination to work with. Next up, your companions are used to long walks, reduces the speed at which the troops fatigue by 10%. Our cunning fighters, experience in combat increased by 10%, influence of the battle 10%, incredible resilient, critical damage uh, 10%, or recruitment of companions is reduced by 10%. I have no idea which one is good, but um, I, am pers uh, I am swaying towards the constitution because my logic is experience, albeit if you gain it a little bit faster, you would effectively accumulate the maximum level at some point. Um, this one looks interesting as well. Longer walks means uh, being there faster. Critical damage also seems uh, interesting, but I don't know how crit works in these games. And recruitment costs, I don't want to recruit too many or too frequently. Hopefully we're not dying that often. So let's go with incredible resilience and if they had a flaw, it would be somewhat meek appearance, carrying capacity reduction, reduces troops happiness during each rest, critical hit reduced, a very hard time getting up. Your company uh, companions will leave the troop more quickly if they're unhappy. Hmm. Well, I don't want the last one. Uh, I think loyalty and duty is important if we have companions. Danger during rest itself is increased. That fits nicely into the theme of being hunted, right? So something can happen during uh, the um, during the 
evenings. Adapt effect perspiration, difficulty of all regions adapts dynamically to your group size and unit power. Game will always offer a challenge. Each region in the world has a set difficulty from the start. You will have to expand and improve the troops before you can explore more dangerous territory. Call me old school, but Mammy ain't raised no soy boy, so we're not going to go with the Skyrim version. I want the extra hardcore experience. Region lock exploration it is. Combat difficulty expert, of course. Survival expert. Save Iron Man. Nothing short but carnage. And uh, what is uh, the mouse over? One mistake and you're dead. That seems like the exact uh, difficulty for me. Surviving and saving money will be painful endeavors. Fantastic. I am used to masochism on this channel. One save, one chance. Uh, sounds like an Eminem rap song. I like it, so we're going with that. Save now, uh, Saigon blind uh, first try. There we go. Let's jump into it. So, customization. We got a swordsman of swords. I like the idea of... Uh, I like the idea of customizing this. And I will just use very active subscribers uh, in order to represent uh, them. So, Namri, who is commenting very often, is going to be our frontline... Uh, our frontline face slightly more brownish skin tone I imagine her to be kind of a, Pers a Persian type of uh, a woman um, good clothing color there isn't much that we can do cool good enough for now Namri is there uh, random I think there's uh, mm, a good uh, reason to call this guy Dilly G. Uh, mm, shoots from the back. I don't like your hair though. Uh, Dilly. It's quite a bit of a rebel. Uh, I like that one. Didn't fit in. Misfit in the streets and then uh, essentially uh, ended up with our gang. I like that. What kind of trait do we have? Random positive trait. Ooh, crit chance increase, constitution increase, strength increase. Dexterity increased by 5%. Clever, quick, volunteer. I think we want the crits. He is our range damage dealer. So let's go with that. And he's dexterous. Um. Mm -hmm -hmm. Carrying capacity a little bit reduced. Okay, cool. We can live with that. By the way, what's Namri's positive trait? Uh, I think constitution increase, great. Strength wouldn't be bad. Thick skin, I think that is needed. And has a drinking problem. I think that's a fair way of describing our viewers. No, I'm just kidding, of course. Good, we got a ranger. Uh, ranger seems to be kind of a rogue type of class as well. Uh, let's go with Ender, uh, Ender Sanders. Commenting very regularly, so there you go, my friend. Got a character right away. I want someone with a face that tells a story, something that I can work on. This guy here looks like he has... Oh yeah, so here's the deal. He um, actually has the face of a betrayer and often was used as an underground spy, but uh, he has a heart of gold. That will be his, uh, his trait. Just need to find the right uh, the right hairdress that conveys that message. Yes, this could be a DA underground uh, drug agent, but in a med medieval time. I like it. Facial hair is good. Clothing is good. So random trade. We want... Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, a 
experience seems to be good. Movement increased by one. I think that's helpful because he needs to be quick on his feet. But he also deals damage, so bloodthirsty is the way to go. I like the idea of the depression. That fits the DA, DA um, drug, uh, D, uh, drug, undercover drug agent theme quite well. Very good. And then finally, and then the final spot for our, I think it's a warrior, right? Warriors class? Yeah, warrior level one. That would be JP Pauly. Also very active uh, commenter. Uh, he needs to be, I think, no offense to Polly, but his character needs to be kind of the brutish, stupid guy. So I need a face that conveys that. To childish, eh, sort of. Uh, a haircut, one that screams, I would never go with that. Well, maybe the straight up bold hair isn't that. Maybe a bit of a Chinese background. Ooh. All right, mustache. I like that. Okay, cool. So we're going to go extra crit and extra strong, but a bit stupid. Gains less experience. Uh, it sucks, but okay. And we got a pony level one. Okay. Let's call this Murphy. All right, Murphy. Perfect traits for a pony. Does the pony fight? Really? It needs to be extra, uh, extra constitution. And how about extra carry capacity? There you go. I mean, it's a pony, right? Unlucky. Yeah, it's not, hopefully not going to end up in combat. Murphy is supposed to be extra resilient and carry a lot. And with that, we jump right into it. Let's see what War Tales have to offer. I'm actually looking quite forward to this game. I have had it on my uh, watch list for a while because I wanted to see if there could be an XCOM game that would fill kind of that medieval uh, setting or that fantasy setting. Enough is enough. After bearing that horrible captain's abuse for far too long, your companions have finally enjoyed their well-deserved freedom. Although, deserters are never welcome sight, be it for their former colleagues or for the locals who regard them as traitors for some reason. They will need to keep their heads down whilst making a living. I like it. Cool. Let me familiarize myself really quickly with uh, the UI and then we give it a go. Okay, so we're ready to explore the game. Let me just lead you through it. I took a bit longer to just go through it because lesson number one, um, if you start a new tactic games, uh, game is never just walk into it because that's the most sure way of getting killed. First of all, read everything uh, within the menus and try to understand of, uh, how the game works. So we got five companions in our uh, group. There are a couple of bonuses. Now, apparently knowledge will allow us to learn. So that's resource number one to know. Ability to help and learn new blueprints. Uh, there are a couple of blueprints, I think down here, that will cost one knowledge point or 100 uh, of these knowledge resources. And just to highlight a few, it allows you to run, for instance, for a period of time. I like this one here a lot. Career plans allows you to enhance control over companion's evolution. You can spend influence to get um, one additional point to aptitude when leveling up. Uh, less food that uh, is uh, consumed or you resort completely to cannibalism. More uh, carrying capacity. 
maximum valor points, which is another resource that I come to in a second. So kind of a lot of uh, small improvements. And apparently, depending on the traits that you have learned, and I'll come to that as well, there are even further options that you can learn over time. In this case here, we have lockpicks, uh, ropes, and a few other things just uh, that we can create. And on top of what we can already create, there are additional things, uh, items uh, that we can learn, such as a saddleback. So that's resource number one. Resource number two has a bit of a scenario here. Each region has its own scenario and you can follow the progress here. We do not do that yet. Suspicion apparently seems to be our wanted level. I assume it's a little bit like GTA. Um, so we're... Uh, yeah, we're, we've just started with a bit more suspicion than normally. Happiness is a resource that allows us to gain Valor points. Yeah, the Valor points kept out at four Valor points in maximum and Valor apparently is used for extra combat maneuvers. We're going to see that in a second. Uh, 15 experience gained in combat. Uh, okay, uh, if your happiness uh, goes up to 15, you even get more combat experience. So. Basically, the happiness seems to work a bit, a bit like in Battletech. It gives you passive um, bo uh, bony for fights. Any um, thing, any gains about 15 grants you five sword um, per happiness point. And sword is influence. Your influence can be used to recruit new companions. So that makes sense. There is our food um, and there is our crones. The crones are the currency here most of which are due to in wages, so we can't really afford a huge force right now. We gotta do a deal with what we do have. So let's inspect um, the details. I talked, let's start maybe here with Anders uh, Sanders, uh, because uh, he's the first one where I selected a trait. Um, every character can select one trait. At the moment, uh, I can only select Tinker, which gives a passive bonus of plus 2% crit. But if I select a trait, I think that that will lock me out on uh, the other traits. So I, uh, I can't kind of select something else at the moment. Anyways, I'll, I, I will get like one trait per character. And I, it felt like he as the undercover uh, DA uh, drug agent would be well suited with Tinkerer. Anyways, this gives a passive bonus and apparently we can sink knowledge points into it. So great system so far, very easy to understand. Let's do a couple of core mechanics because this is how I approach games. This guy here deals damage, six to seven to be precise. Then we're looking over to critical hits. Critical hits uh, are 25% chance. Um, oh no, wait a second, 4% base value chance for 25, uh, respectively 27% extra damage. So crits are not twice the amount, it's just 1.3 times the amount. The reason why that is important is when I approach a game, I want to understand what's the damage output versus what can we take. He, ta he deals seven, uh, six to seven uh, damage on a crit, around 10 points of damage. He does have 18 health, which means in two hits, one a crit and a normal hit, he, he's almost capable of killing himself. Now, in order to mitigate that, guard apparently is the type of armor, which reduces damage of incoming attacks as long as the unit has armor. Attacks from behind ignore 50% of this reduction. We do have um, armor. Armor protects health and maintain, uh, maintains guard and must be repaired after each fight. Currently we have a base armor of plus 5. What I haven't found out yet is how armor and damage interacts. Whether 5 armor means he's essentially dealing 1 to 2 points of damage. Or if 5 armor means something abstract as well. So kind of a percentage reduction. And there is no indication. The game doesn't tell me that yet. But what it means is if he would, if Anders would hit Anders, um, not only am I informed that armor is going down, but we're also informed that uh, he could kill himself in two to three hits if no armor is worn. And with armor, it's hopefully a little bit more. Let's look through the stats. Strengths uh, increase the strength skill, uh, damage and critical damage. And dexterity does the same for dex. Every weapon has either strengths or dex. And I intuitively, because it's kind of 
logic with the uh, with the role playing uh, genre. Uh, it chose the correct stats. Uh, daggers uh, go with dexterity, whilst the axes and swords go with strength. Bow goes with dexterity as well. Constitution gives a base value and uh, health, as well as carrying capacity, which I appreciate. It's a good skills. Uh, it's a good trait. Willpower I found interesting because uh, that is. Um, the critical uh, hit chance but also willpower every 15 points allows you to survive the first time that you are leathily struck in combat so actually taking that depression is pretty bad for enders I realize that now but I didn't know the system so it is what it is um, willpower would be something that I would like to level up to 15 so at least escape that lethality Critical hit uh, chance is currently 9%, that on itself is great, um, so we're continuing with it. And movement uh, is, like I assume, move around in combat. Rogue needs to be fast, we want to hit from behind. Now, every single weapon, besides being uh, stacked from a, from a certain stat, dexterity, also uh, has an extra attack. In this case, it's ambush. Uh, so daggers increase the critical hit chance by an extra 30% um, So you can see that when a unit triggers an ambush when it is um, Attacking an enemy that's engaged from uh, the other side. So Enders needs to sneak behind uh, the enemies and then essentially he will deal uh, Has a 39% chance of uh, dealing critical uh, critical strikes and enders as this special resource of Valor can disengage and move in a straight line up to five meters between units which is cool so uh, we have a way of kind of disengaging most of the slots are empty let's check the others core system is clear uh, we do have a 13 percent chance for a shield block uh, for further reduction uh, which Nemri can do. She's running that nice sword and board here. You can already see she has 10 armor, uh, 8 from uh, there and um, plus 2 from here. And guard on top of that reduces the damage um, uh, even further as long as you have armor. So she has twice as much armor as Enders and has guard on top of it, but deals way less damage, only 4 to 5. And she has, I think, the um normal slice action plus just four to five damage uh, to a single target but uh, she can use uh, first aid so she's also the medic of this team and removes stack of poison bleeding and burning we just need a value point for that it's potentially what i'm going to use my valor points for her sword goes off of strengths she has a lot of constitution very low uh, crit chance but decent crit uh, amount if she crits so that is her we got jp Pauli, who is the frontline warrior i don't want to make him a tinker although the extra uh, two percent crit are sounding uh, more and more interesting he does have a two-handed weapon an old two-handed axe that he is using um, and as such he will be using strength mostly which is great uh, he deals six points of damage um, and has an aoe attack called maim so um, maim apparently attacks everyone in the area it says here six damage to all units in the area and if you critically hit it also applies bleeding on top of it he has wrath uh, which is again one of uh, these valor point uh, um, options four to five points of damage if a target has less than 50 percent health left um, and if he uh, fatally blows the unit aka kills it reduces it uh, to a zero uh, he will trigger fury which means the next attack gets 50% extra damage so he sounds like a pretty straightforward um, fighter uh, that is going to deal damage 20 hit points means he can take a lot of beating it's almost as much um, as Namri which then brings us to Dilly G who deals quite a bit of damage on range 9 meters uh, accuracy um, uh, 9 meters range 
Uh, he can get deafness with Valor points, um, sniping on longer uh, distances and higher accuracy. So that might be important for later. And his weapon, not surprisingly, goes off of dexterity. So with a 5 to 8 points of damage and a solid 7% uh, crit chance, he can also almost kill himself in two shots. We gotta be really careful with that. In terms of experience, um, most of uh, these guys have some experience. It's interesting to see that Dilly for some reason is almost like level 2. No clue how that happened. I haven't done anything. Uh, finally, Murphy, the pony, has essentially a rush attack for 3 to 4 damage and a bit of health. And that's pretty much it. Plus a lot of carrying capacity and a couple of saddlebags. Cool. Now, there is another meter here. Relationships. Your companions can build relationships. Uh, the relationship between two companions ranging from hated to love can evolve depending on their interactions. So, uh, currently there is nothing here. But we're going to certainly roleplay that out uh, as time uh, progresses. So, that's it. Uh, the last few bits. Pathways. There is a bit that we can, um, bit that we can obtain on our power and glory path. We are apparently in Power and Glory, Trade and Craftsmanship, Crime and Chaos, as well as Mysteries and Wisdom, are very much at the beginning, so no surprise here. Uh, we went through Companions, this is the world map, not much to see here, and in the inventory we do have a little bit of food. And that's pretty much it. Uh, let's take a good look. We start around here, and apparently uh, there are a couple of points of interest that I would like to see. For Belladonna. Oh yeah. Bandits. Well, let's do some fighting. Enough talky-talky. And way more fighty-fighty. When your turn comes to play, uh, you haven't used yet on the road. You can find out which enemy will do when they come into play. Per, uh, prepare your strategy. Okay, cool. Okay, so what we're going to do is this our front line. We're going to rush in. Uh, Diddy is shooting. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We got a poacher over here. That's a uh, ranged character. Memory is actually going to engage on him. And we're going to double team up on this Hodlum here. Um, poacher will act first. Okay, end of round. Two of ours, then Poacher, two of ours, then Hodlum. How many meters is this here? I think Dilly over here isn't bad because then we can take a shot. But he can shoot back, so nah. We're not going to do that. Six meters. If this is six meters, then this is not nine meters. So this looks more like it. Dilly, then move in to keep him uh, to keep him busy. Take a shot. Move in, finish, move in. Okay, good. Well, is this ready? No. Retreat? No, no, no. How do I start the battle? Okay, we're already in battle, I see. Um, kill enemy units to raise your morale meter. Your units significantly bolstering. Okay, cool. Well, let's start with... A shot. That significantly reduced their armor, but we haven't done anything yet. Um, Dilly carefully moves over here. Can you turn around? 
currently makes no difference. Okay, there we go. End of turn. Moves up. And boy, this is going to hurt. When you perform a melee attack uh, on a free enemy you engage, an engaged unit can only attack their engaged opponents and has a higher chance of taking critical damage. Take advantage of this with, o with other units. Uh, an engaged unit is exposing their back, attack them from behind. Okay, cool. Well, now we're engaged. Uh, disengage triggers an attack of opportunity, which we don't want. Instead, we are ending Pauly's turn. Good, I can show you how it's done. Back to back, we are going to stab. Can we stab again? Ooh, look at that. We can even move away. That's cool. Because he's engaged already. So the idea of the rogue is really to move in and move out. Okay, cool. That works well. End of turn, we're going to take a counter-attack. Oh, they are using poison. Good, new round is starting. First things first. We're hitting this guy. Ending our turn. Secondly, very well, he's now poisoned. We're moving up because maybe we can uh, get the poison healed with bandages. That yeah, takes one point of poison damage. Namri continues to hit. Yeah, we were out of range. I should have potentially moved in more aggressively. That's okay. Good, we're now behind. Oh boy. 14, well that was a critical hit. We are repairing everything, okay. Very good. So what's our loot? Uh, we got experience, we got influence, we got human remains. And we got some food. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're not going to uh, take the human remains. But, so a couple of things. Um, JP took some poison damage, but apparently didn't care. True warrior. I like that. And Dilly can now level up. Wow, we do have level trees. That is not bad. Every time this unit ends the turn next to an enemy and is not engaged in combat, you gain a valor point. Every time the unit kills an enemy, you gain a valor point. Or every time this unit ends their turn next to an ally uh, and is not engaged in combat, you gain a point. Hmm. 
I think what we're going to do is we're taking uh, Valorius Victory because he's Dilly is supposed to be our damage dealer. Can I choose one or can I choose multiples? So dexterity plus one allows us to deal more damage. But we're sort of short on movement and I've seen how problematic movement was. So let's upgrade movement to eight. That's a lot uh, to be gained there. Two extra movement can mean quite a bit. Because that will allow us more uptime. We will get dexterity, don't uh, don't worry with that. Uh, that will actually work quite well. More dexterity means more damage, uh, more base damage, and then critical hits will automatically happen. So we got every time this unit kills an enemy, you gain a Valor point, right? We lost one Valor point, I think due to bandaging uh, JP poorly. Good, okay, and last thing, we got a dagger, damage dagger, dexterity plus three. Six to seven points of damage and applies one poison. I mean, that looks much better than the dagger that we're having. Dex plus three damage and poisoning skill is better than Dex plus two and stab skill. Uh, step increases critical hit chance from behind. Well, uh, that is okay. Poison seems better. Okay, cool. Can he dual wield? No, he cannot. Well, we do have a spear dagger in hand. All right. First things first, by the way, I saw another group kind of walking there. But since it's already getting later and later, are you bandits? We have nothing. We are only refugees fleeing the Ederanian war. Please let us go. I beg you. Um, how much food do we have? I think we wanted to to play a good uh, bunch of uh, characters, so we're definitely not going to attack. Here's three bread. Uh, I assume you guys have nothing. Cool, so... Why does he have an armor plus 10? That looks like a fine armor to me. When I think about many people don't shoot their ponies, it makes me want to pull out the little hair I have left. Movement speed in the world increases by 3%. Hmm. Let's double check. Well, we certainly have not shoot our pony, so you do have no hair left. I think we're just fitting right in. Do we want to... Do we want to buy that? I think uh, that's not a bad idea. Oh, okay. Well, we either can carry more. Or be faster. For now, we're just faster. Um, would you want to uh, trade us this dagger? I think that's not a bad idea. Here you go. We're back to 66. Tell you what. Buy a horse for us, and I'll throw in the horseshoes for free. Well, you should have mentioned that beforehand. Oh, 
Although the war in Edoran has been a boon for my business, I can tell you aren't soldiers. Take them with you if you can. Otherwise, they would most likely end up dead on the battlefield through no fault of their own. Yeah, we can recruit them, but we're unfortunately not in a position to do that. So, if we ever lose our pony, Murphy, then this is the place to get a new one. Alright, apparently that is pretty much it, so not much more we can get, but there is something in the woods. Is there a stamina or something? No, apparently we can just go on. Couple of mushrooms, okay. Oh, look at that, new profession, angler. What does angler do? Willpower plus one. Who had the poor willpower? I think it was you. No, that was the stupid one, Anders Sanders. Anders is now a novice ang angler and Diligi will take over the tinkery uh, trade. Good. Learn how to fish. We have absolutely use a hook in the water. Well, we first of all need to create uh, create hooks. So, oh, da, 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 da. I think that worked like here. No, where was it once again? Fish hook. How do we create that? Uh, I do have an idea. How about we're doing that? Workshop, use, confirm, fish hooks, craft two fish hooks. Thank you. Uh, whilst you're at it, can you craft a torch? No. Well, it looks like we're missing a lot of materials. Holy. Uh, are we resting already? I'm sort of afraid that we might be losing our day uh, days. So career plan is the first one that I want to learn. You can spend influence to add uh, one to an aptitude when leveling up. Okay, cool. Good, now that we have done that.
enders will actually start to fish. Okay, well that didn't work out. Let's try that again. Okay, I'm missing something here. Use the hook to cast the line. Once uh, the fish is hooked, hold uh, the left mouse button to keep the line tight in the central zone. Okay. Okay, I got it. Well, that was already it, children. We have uh, captured one fish uh, using two of our hooks, but we can get a little bit more. I like the idea of fishing or for the better part of just creating your own stuff. Whilst uh, that has happened though, I think we're through the first day of adventure so far. It's a great look on the game. I hope you enjoyed the rundown of all of the different mechanics and we are trying to keep to a half an hour to 45 minutes scheduled episodes. We're definitely going to revisit War Tales, hopefully in two days from now. Thanks for watching. If you feel like you want to be drafted as a soldier, there's a great chance of leaving a comment below today. And if you want to man mode up into the world in the world of War Tales, then you need to draw your sword and just fight against that like button as if there would be no tomorrow. Take care, guys, and have a good one. Bye bye.